Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I am here with my Distashify makes for March um, and my fabric haul as well. These are fabrics that you didn't get to see in February because I hadn't received them yet. Um, but yeah, we're going to be walking through that. But before we get into our video, I have a little announcement. Um, I am getting ready to launch, or I am, it actually opens today <laughs> as you're watching this, Pattern Fitting 101. My Pattern Fitting 101 course is the cart is opening today. It will be open for the next 10 days. Um, and if you grab it within the first 24 hours, so if you're watching this on Tuesday, if you grab it before um, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., um, you also get the picking patterns for your body shape class as well for free. Um, but yeah, opening the doors for Pattern Fitting 101. So that will be starting, the six-week um, course will be starting on uh, April 8th will be when Module 1 drops and when, um, well, the community will be open the minute you uh, buy, the, buy the class. But uh, the lives and everything will start on um, eight, the 8th, April 8th, and go for six weeks. Um, you have access to the class, you know, for forever, um, for, for as long as I'm in business. <laughs> um, be, but it, there's a component of recorded things in the class. And then there's also a little live component, uh, just with things being live and the community whole portion of that, um, is why it's the six week course, um, to take advantage of that. But you can get everything out of the class without taking, you know, without taking advantage of the community. I think the community is a very nice aspect of it though and helps get you more out of the class is kind of what I'm saying. But the class by itself, the recorded modules are enough. I am just really buggling that up. Anyway, if you're interested, I will leave the link down below um, or if you want more information, I will leave that link uh, down below and you can go read more about it, the FAQs and all that kind of stuff as well. But I just want to let you all know that it is opening back up for the spring session. Okay. Let's talk about, um, yeah, let's talk about Distashify and seam work. I have made two seam work patterns uh, this month, and I am so excited about both of these. <laughs> All right, so last month when I did my April makes, or my February, April, my February makes, um, I didn't have this fabric in yet, uh, but it is here now, and I clearly had a color palette that I was going with when I uh, did pick out these fabrics. I am just over the moon. So um, I have had a Seamwork membership since the inception. Since Seamwork first started doing memberships, I have had a membership with them. In fact, I, I'm even grandfathered in like their original pricing um, on that. Um, and I have, I mean, basically any of their patterns. I've got, you know, that you get credits every month when you've got um, a membership with them uh, that you can use on patterns, any of the patterns in their catalog. It doesn't have to be the new patterns that month. It could be any of the patterns in their catalog. Uh, and But uh, since I've been a member since the beginning, <laughs> I've got credits for all of them. Um, anyway, I have needing to be using more of them because I've got all of them. And um, yeah, I, I want to be using what I've got and uh, really exploring that. And I'm so glad that I did because I'm over the moon with both of the dresses that I made this month. Also, I do have an affiliate link now with uh, Seamwork Magazine. What's nice about Seamwork is that they do have a membership, but you can buy their patterns separately as well. Now you can't buy like the newest month's patterns yet. You have to wait, I think a month before you can buy it's for members only, uh, but then I think after they've been out for a month or something, then you can go and buy the patterns. Um, neither of these are this month's patterns, so these are both old patterns um, or older patterns. But you can go through and just buy the pattern that you want, or um, you can do the membership. And I have a code for 50% uh, off the annual membership. If that is something that you are interested in, it will be linked down below. Um, but yeah, really excited to have an affiliate now with Seamwork and to be sewing them. Mostly, I mean, Jenny fits into Seamwork without making any adjustments. And guys, I, um, I'm going to be exploring more of these because I made very few adjustments to these. And I'm going to explain kind of what I did um, to do that. Okay, so um, I have two patterns here. Like I said, I've got the gray dress which is a seamwork pattern, and then the laurel dress. The laurel dress is actually an old Colette pattern. So seamwork was Colette patterns before, um, then they were both for a while, and now everything just falls under the seamwork um, umbrella. 
But this was, this pattern is based off of the Colette sloper. This one is based off the Seamwork sloper and they're just a little bit different. Not much, but a little bit different. So we'll talk about this one first because it's closest to me. Okay, this fabric is a silk crepe de chine, uh, Nanette Lepore silk. It is stunning. The colors on it are absolutely on my color palette. Um, and I can't remember, I think I bought the piece, uh, but it was over three yards, like maybe three and a half or three and three quarter. I can't remember. It was over three yards. It's near, it was narrow, um, narrow fabric, but I, and I used it all because this entire dress is cut on the bias. Um, it's got kind of hard to see the style lines on here because the print is so busy, but, um, the bodice is cut on the bias as well as the skirt is cut on the bias. And so you've got a center front seam going down, um, center front of the skirt center front seam here, and then there is a center back seam on the bodice as well as on the skirt. It doesn't fit my mannequin very well because I can't find the bra that goes on this mannequin. It's somewhere around here. Um, but anyway, so pretend she has boobs because I do. <laughs> I'm just over the moon with how this fits. I love my bias slip skirt that I made um, back in December, and I've been wanting to make a bias slip dress but I didn't want anything with spaghetti straps because then I can't wear a regular bra. And while I did wear those back in the day, in the 90s when they came around then, um, I'm just not interested. I mean, I'm not gonna go strapless, I'm just not. So the only way I'd be able to wear one of those spaghetti straps, slip, uh, slip dresses is if, is if I've always got something over it or always have something underneath it, which isn't, you know, that's a really fun way to dress, to wear a slip dress. And I'll absolutely be wearing this slip dress those ways. But I wanted to be able to wear it just as a slip dress as well. And when I saw this one in the catalog, um, I was like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. It's got nice thick straps. So I can wear a regular bra with it. And lo and behold, covers my bra. Absolutely love this thing. I cannot wait to style this all sorts of ways. Um, it hits me midi length. And um, I only the only alteration I made to this was to shorten it in a couple of places, a couple of key places. So the seamwork patterns have two um, size charts. They have a zero to 16 size chart that is drafted for a C cup. So that's a three inch difference between your upper bust and full bust. And then their larger size range is a size 12 to, oh geez, 30 or 32, I think. Um, but that size range is drafted for a double D cup, which I'm assuming would be a five inch difference, I guess. Anyway. Um, and I was, fall, I fell right on the size 12. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and make the larger size range because then I won't have to do a full bust adjustment. I really didn't want to mess with a full bust adjustment on this because it's cut on the bias. There's no darts. Um, it's just a little bit of a bodice and it worked perfectly. I didn't need to do a full bust adjustment. Now I shortened it one inch, um, and the bodice and then only one, I think I only did one inch on the skirt, the lengthen and shorten line on the skirt. I wish, because I was holding the pieces up to me and I'm like, I think this hits like about my waist when it gets to the back, the front comes up. It's supposed to be like right under your bust. I wish I would have left the bodice pieces completely alone, like add that one inch back in and taken the inch out of the top part of the skirt pieces. Cause I do need to bring the waist up. So um, seamwork patterns, I think their smaller size range is drafted for a, si a height of five eight and their larger size range is drafted for a height of five nine. I'm five two. So I definitely needed to lose some inches in the length. Um, and I kind of thought, well, maybe taking that out of the bus, you know, maybe it's longer, you know, it might be longer up here too. I mean, I could have made a muslin. <laughs> But who wants to do that? Not me. I mean, this fits fine. It fits perfectly. But it would come underneath my bust even better um, if it were, if I'd left that one inch in and just taken the one inch out of the skirt at the top and then taken the other inch at the bottom. I probably could have gotten away with taking two inches out of the bottom. Um, but I kind of like where this hits. I, and that's why I only took one inch out of the length of the skirt because I wanted to play around with the length um, that I thought I could always trim off the bottom if I want to take more off. But I only did the one inch at the bottom um, and I think it's fine. The length I think is fine. Again, this dress really skims. So it's not the end of the world that the bust seam, um, on pure bust seam doesn't sit directly because it doesn't cup. It doesn't cup the busts. That's not what it's supposed to do. There's nothing I hate more than if it's supposed to be like cup the bust and then down. 
and your seams hitting like mid boob, which is how all ready to wear was for me in the 90s. Um, that drives me nuts. But this, because it skims, it hits kind of in the lower part of my chest. I don't think it's very obvious. So I'm going to wear this and it's going to be fine. But if I were making this again, and I might, I might make myself a solid one. I'm going to add that one inch back into the bodice and um, then take an inch out of the skirt at the top, kind of by the waist, um, to get myself everything where it needs to be. But those are the only alterations that I made to this, was removing three or two inches of length out of two spots. So one inch out of one spot, one inch out of the other. And that's all I did for this, and I absolutely loved it. Um, the bodice is fully lined with self-fabric, um, but the skirt is not. But I did go ahead and do um, by our French seams on the entire inside of this. So I, the serger did not touch any of this fabric. And then I did the little narrow hem at the bottom, that trick that I did, um, where I did the video with my slip skirt, um, uh, back in December, I did that God, works a treat. <laughs> it really, it's a beautiful little baby hem. Very proud of it. Um, and yeah, I didn't do anything special to the fabric. I used a brand new Microtex needle size 10, uh, to sew this up with, I used regular thread, my Gouda and Mara 100. I get asked those questions a ton. Now, once I sewed, have sewn this with a brand new needle, that needle will be done. Silk is a very um, tough fabric, a very strong fabric, and it will dull a needle. One project, it will dull that needle. Um, so it, that needle is done after um, this project. But I think it works out beautifully. It's looking a little uh, very deep plunging on the model. Not so much on me. Um, and again, this is too big for this uh, dummy here. So for the mannequin. So anyway, absolutely love the Grace dress. I will be making more. Highly recommend. It's just four pattern pieces. It is a bodice, front bodice, back bodice, front skirt, back skirt. That is it. Um, you cut out the bodice pieces four times. So a left and a right, and then the lining left and the right um, for both the front and the back. And it, it, it goes together really easily. So um, highly recommended. It. it was a pretty simple sew, and um, I'm very pleased with the results. Okay, let's now talk about, let me switch them. Let's talk about the laurel. So like I mentioned, this is um, one of their older patterns, the Colette patterns. I got this beautiful stretch um, cotton sateen that um, I think it was, it was originally from Minerva because the tag was still on it. Came from the same seller and um, clearly color palette in mind. <laughs> but I wanted something a little bit more structured, but I still wanted a spring slash summery dress. And I was going through the catalog and I thought, you know what? I, I'm gonna make the laurel up. Um, I love this style of dress on me and um, let's give it a try. Now the block was different for this one. It does come in two different size ranges, but I don't think the cup sizes are different and there was no overlap in sizes. It was like zero to 12 or zero to 16. I think that's what it was, zero to 16. And then the next size range was 18 to whatever, uh, 30 maybe. Um, I should have looked at that, I'm sorry. Um, so there was no overlapping on sizes. So I had to go ahead and make the 12. So I made the top size and the um, lower size range. And um, I think it works out really well. I did pick, and I think they've always drafted for a C cup. So I thought, well, you know, this is kind of roomy. Um, and I sized up one. Technically my upper bust would put me in a 10, but I just went ahead and sized up to a 12. I'm like, let's just give it a, a go, see how things fall. And this fits me, I think, really, really well. The dark points sit where they should. Um, I feel like the neckline looks really nice on me. I did shorten it one inch at the waist. So I brought the waist notches up one inch um, to raise up that waist, that narrow point on the waist. Um, and then I shortened the skirt at the lengthened and shortened line two inches. So I did take three inches out of this dress. And I think it hits me right where it's supposed to, right above the knee. Uh, the other thing that I did, um, well, I did piping, but we'll talk about that in a second. I did just the straight sleeves as is. It's got the darts in the front. The pattern also comes with um, fisheye darts in the back. I am not a huge fan of fisheye darts on me because I am so straight through my waist and hips. I know that people that want to accentuate their waist love to have a good fisheye dart. Um, it's just not, with my body style, it's not my favorite. Sometimes you actually absolutely have to have them in there. Uh, but it's not my favorite. So what I did instead, I omitted the fisheye darts, 
but I did come in center back seam. So I didn't just leave all that in. Um, I did come in and gave myself a very curved center back seam right there at the waist um, so that it would nip in at the back of my waist so that it wasn't just, you know, falling straight back. But that's my preference for shaping in my back as opposed to the fisheye darts. So that's um, all I did there. There's an invisible zipper here in the back. The dress is fully lined. This was the third fabric that I got from Distashify. Um, this was just a stretch cotton, um, like a shirting kind of, it's pretty thin, but it is in this brown color. I'm using it because it's a flesh tone, not necessarily my flesh tone, but it is a flesh tone. So I thought that would be a good color to have underneath the white, uh, for the lining. And I think it worked out really well, um, for that. And that's why, that's what I love about Pistachify. You can grab, you know, linings like that or pocketings. I thought that would be a good color to have like, um, under white shorts. I'm now zipping the lining up into my invisible zipper. Um, anyway, I love to stashify for those type of things. Okay, but I wanted to add a little bit of zhuzhing up. And so I added a, um, I'll come closer to the mirror or to the, the camera so you can kind of see. I added this line of piping here at the neck in the orange. And I also put it around my pockets. I'll zoom in on it when I take my photos of me and the dress. So I actually filmed um, the process of making the uh, piping and then inserting the piping both into the pockets and the neckline. Um, I think that's gonna be a separate video though. If that's something that interests you on how I did that, it's pretty simple. And I just think it adds just the most fun little contrast pop of color and then highlights the pockets because the pockets would have gotten absolutely lost in this busy fabric um, on the front. And I kind of omitted them, <coughs> excuse me, but I didn't want to. <laughs> I think it's a cute little detail. I thought it might also be cute. You would have to do a facing for the sleeves because um, you have to put piping into a seam. Um, so you would have to create a kind of a seam at the bottom of the sleeve and then, you know, face it so that it finishes it off on the inside. I thought about doing it on the sleeves and on the skirt. Uh, the bottom of the hem, but I also didn't want to create hard um, lines on those parts of my body. I was afraid it was going to make my arms look shorter or my skirt or my legs look short. Um, so I just went with the neckline and the pockets. Um, I thought two places. So I don't know. What do you all think? It was really fun. Um, and I'm excited to wear my custom dress. Jenny was over the moon with it, which I'm like, okay, Jenny loves it. Um, <laughs> it's good to have a friend in the sewing room, right? Um, but yeah, I, again, the darts are in the correct place on me. I think it fits me lovely. Um, I could probably do a little bit of a sway back adjustment on this pattern for next time. Um, not a big one, like maybe just like a half of an inch would probably be enough. Um, but for this, I'm absolutely fine. I think it, it go, it's fine. Um, so I'm not going to worry about this version and it's going to get worn a ton, but there you have it. Those are my two new dresses for the upcoming months. Now, let's talk about fabric. <laughs> I grabbed two fabrics this month. Both of them came from Distashify. I think both of them came from, because um, they, were, they were selling yardage. Although I think I got all of the yardage of both. Maybe not. If there's any yardage left on either of these, I'll link it down below. Um, so I'll look before, before I um, post the video. But um, Detachify acquired a whole bunch of fabric from a fabric store that had gone out of business. And so they do have some yardage that you can find that's, and Detachify is the seller on that. And so um, anyway, I was just looking through and these colors just spoke to me because they speak spring. And um, actually this fabric absolutely matches my nails right now. I've got kind of a pinky coral nail going on. Uh, so my first fabric is linen, 100% linen, and this beautiful corally color. See, it matches my fingernails. Um, and it's beautiful. And I think, gosh, I feel like I ordered four yards of one of these and five of the other. And maybe it's five of, of this one, and then I got the rest of it, like I bought all of it. There may still be some of this left. But it's 100% linen, and I really want to make myself a linen shirt dress for the summer. I love a good shirt dress. Linen is beautiful to wear. Um, love wearing linen in the summer. I even love it when it's kind of rumpled. That's one of my favorite ways to wear it. And um, anyway, I was looking. Uh, Seamwork has a couple that I was kind of looking at. So... Um, 
I'm tempted to do another seam work pattern to see if it was just a fluke that these fit me so easily or if um, maybe I was just discounting them not fitting me because they're drafted for such a taller person. But um, uh, yeah, I had to hardly do anything to these and I'm very pleased with my finished dresses. So I think this might be another seam work dress, um, a shirt dress. And again, I'll pop some pictures up of some of the ones I'm kind of thinking about, um, but it'll be a surprise which one I pick. Uh, but I think I'd wear this a ton in the spring and summer. So that was the first fabric I grabbed. And then the second one, and I think I grabbed all of this one. This is a, a tinsel twill, and um, it's absolutely beautiful in this kind of buttery yellow color. Again, I think I grabbed five yards of it, thinking it would be just great for um, just like some basics. So my daughter has a pair of pleated high waist, like sit at her natural waist pants that she got from Everlane. They're in a kind of a sage green color. She's worn them to death. Um, in fact, I did a video on how to alter the waist because um, I had to alter the waistband on those for her. Worn them to death. She absolutely loves them. And I asked her, I was like, oh my gosh, it's the same fabric. So her pants from Everlane are also um, a Lyocell or a Tinsel 12. Um, and she felt it. She's like, oh yeah, it feels just like my, you know, she's actually wearing them. She's like, it feels just like my pants. Uh, I asked her if she'd like a pair of yellow ones, um, especially because she is wearing the tar out <laughs> other pair. Um, and she said, yes, she would love a pair of yellow ones. So I think I'm going to make her um, the Paradise Patterns Portia pants. I've been eyeing that pattern forever and it looks very similar to her Everlane ones. So I want to make that pattern up um, in this. And then again, we're going to have so much left over. This is technically more my yellow than it is her yellow. I was looking at her color cards. Her yellow is a cooler, icier yellow. Uh, but I think on her um, bottoms, I think it'll be absolutely fine. So she may get a pair of shorts out of this as well. Um, or I don't know. I don't know. I, I got five yards of it. So I've got tons. So we can definitely get her a pair of pants. Probably also a pair of shorts, maybe a skirt. Um, why is skirt could be really pretty in this? Actually, I wonder if she would want one of those. Um, that would be really flattering on her. But anyway. <laughs> We'll see what it becomes. But um, first off, we're going to do the pants and then we'll leave the rest of this in the stash to be used at a later date, most likely. So that is that. And there we go. That is my Distashify um, March makes and my March fabric haul. Very much looking forward to uh, washing these fabrics and cutting into them and getting sewing. All right, guys, I can't believe we're at the end of March already. <laughs> Definitely don't forget, if you are interested in um, learning more about the Pattern Fitting 101 course and what that entails, I will leave that linked down below, and that link will take you to the information page um, where you can learn all the information um, and stuff before having to sign up or anything like that. So that's all we've got for today. I hope you have enjoyed this one, and I will be back on Friday and stay tuned for um, the video on how to do the piping. Um, I'm not really sure when that'll pop up because I have a couple of things that do need to pop up next week um, just because of time, like when they need to be popping up. Um, so it might be the following week that um, I get the piping video out there, but stay tuned. Uh, that is coming your way. All right, guys, that is all I've got for today. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.